All right, so let's call this evening's meeting to order. This is the Board of Public Works, June 25th, 2014. And uh, first item of business will be public comment. If anyone in the public would like to... Oh, I'm not going to get two weeks in a row, are you? No, <laughs> I hope not. Uh, this may be appropriate, but make me unpopular tonight for saying this. But this is a copy of an email I sent to Bill Dwight regarding the uh, crosswalks. Bill, some thoughts about crosswalks. All crosswalks in the city appear to be of exactly the same design. They have the same width of white lines and the same space in between them. There must be some state or federal standards dictating this, which was determined by numerous safety studies. Crosswalks are conflict zones between pedestrians and drivers of motor vehicles. Drivers have been conditioned to look for crosswalks that have a particular paint design. What is the negative safety factor of cross with crosswalks start to take on different designs and different colors. In addition, some people are biologically colorblind. What may appear as a rainbow of colors to some people appears as various shades of gray to those who are naturally colorblind. What happens when one of these people hits a pedestrian because the crosswalk was not of the standard design? Can the city be held liable for deviating from the standard design? Northampton wishes to begin a street art program that should be done in some other location besides a crosswalk. A large rainbow was painted in the middle of Main Street between crosswalks. I doubt if anyone would object. With the recent painting of the rainbow crosswalk, the city has opened a Pandora's box for any and all groups which wish to express their identity in the, in the form of a unique crosswalk. Shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day, flag, Italian flag colors for Columbus Day, MIA images for Veterans Day, and the list is endless. It's time for the city to find another way to show appreciation for various groups without modifying our crosswalks and compromising pedestrian safety. Um, you, you're welcome to comment now, but we'll, we'll come to your item in a moment. Okay. Uh, next for your consideration, the, we're looking for your approval on the minutes of the June 11th BPW meeting. Move approval. Second. Any comments about that? I did. Okay. Row and Mike made comments on the first meeting minutes, and Mike made a few on the second. Okay. So Row all couldn't find them. <laughs> near perfect. So all in favor of approving the minutes from the June 11th meeting? Aye. Aye. And now the minutes of the May 14th meeting? I'm just abstaining from that vote because I wasn't present. Okay, so one absent. <coughs> have a motion on May 14th. Move for roll. roll. Second. Okay. And, and again, so Mike has made some comments. Mm -hmm. Incorporated. All in favor of approving the minutes of May 14th? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, in new business. Kathy Osborne is here uh, to talk to us about the possibility of making a red, white, and blue crosswalk. The crosswalk um, across from Pulaski Park heading toward uh, Fresh Boston. Um, so yeah, um, my husband's, uh, I don't know, has the letter been distributed? Mm -hmm. You've all seen that. Okay, great. Um, my husband's a veteran and we started talking after the rainbow crosswalk was put out, we really like it and thought it improved visibility and safety, you know, whatever that uh, other letter was talking about, but um, thought it might be really nice to honor the veterans, being that so many people in the city who we know are veterans, and um, my husband being a veteran himself, and so we started just talking to friends who said they would gladly contribute some money to it. We have a lot of money potentially pledged. Um, so I came in to try to get some more information on what the process is, what the cost is, what the commitment is, what the possibilities are, and it sounds like there might need to be a discussion of guidelines for the city. Just, you know, we really liked the Rainbow Crosswalk and thought it would be really nice in that location to honor the veterans near Memorial Hall if it's a possibility. So mm -hmm. I came to explore that with you. Thank you. So it strikes me that, just speaking for myself, that. As, as Kathy said, she came to see what the procedures are, what's the process, and it strikes me we don't have either procedures or process um, regarding this. The first decision was made very ad hoc, very mm -hmm. like, yeah. So there's precedent even though there's There's precedent, but there's no procedure, there's no process, there's no, 
we have no methodology for this. Um, and I have been thinking before it's time to repaint the rainbow crosswalk, we should really take some time to think about that. You know, when it's time to like freshen it up, I mean, is that was this a one-shot deal? Is this something in perpetuity? Who's going to pay for it in perpetuity? How does this work? Well, we just haven't thought this through. It seems to me. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? I think it's. Okay. No problem. I think it's at the rainbow sidewalk or crosswalk adds an incredible vibrancy. I really like it, and it really you know, people come to look at it. And uh, I like the idea. I think art in the downtown, however we decide to install it, is a wonderful thing. And you know, when it honors particular groups, especially the veterans, I think it's a great thing. We have a long history of honoring veterans here at the VA hospital. I like to acknowledge it. I, and yes, the, the rainbow that we did was at Haas, but I think it really excited some some visual appeal, some mm -hmm. new visual appeal in the day. <coughs> so what, what's the process? For example, who buys the paint next time? Well, we, we sort of had a precedent on how we did it with the rainbow, right? They, they raised the money for the paint, and... Do we call them? I mean, what's what? That's what I'm saying. What's our? We need to do we redone. call oh. them? Do we get a phone number and we call them when it's time to put fresh paint down? Mm. Uh, Does fresh paint tend to need to go annually? Would it be just an annual one commitment? Would that yeah. be two no. years? It depends on the paint. Uh, down, I mean, the, the sidewalks or the crosswalks themselves. In the high traffic volume areas are usually done twice a year, time in the springtime and then fall before winter. So you know, I mean, so mm -hmm. it, it just we, we just. There's questions that I would argue are worth coming up with a piece of paper where we say, Francois, that's a great idea. Here are the, you know, this is the. It seems to me that there are at least two aspects to this. One is, one is the one we're good at, which is the technical aspect. You know, what kind of paint should we pick? You know, our crews can do the work. You know, that's. That seems to be sort of within our purview. And then there's this artistic, political aspect to it. And um, I question whether this board should be making those decisions on behalf of the city. And I'm not even sure we did the last time. You know, I think multiple groups, including the city council, were involved in the process. It just wasn't, it was a little helter skelter. We heard it informally from the council. Mm -hmm. um, And we've, we've, we have two examples in front of us that seem to me to be um, sort of uh, uh, warrant broad um, support from the city residents. Um, but I could certainly imagine a group coming that perhaps doesn't get that broad support from the city. And so is it up to this board to say, no, we don't like your cause and your political statement, so we don't think that's appropriate for this community, but we do think these other ones are. And I don't really think that's up to this board. I mean, we're the Department of Public Works, we're not the Department of Public Statements. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, so I, I'd, like, I'd like to see another entity in the city participate in, in that sort of a political aspect. Yeah. There is a newer ordinance that was passed by City Council for public art. I think that was from the last more than 90 days needed to go through the Arts Committee mm -hmm. for the Arts Council. And I know this crosswalk did not, but in the future, if they are going to last more than 90 days, it would have to go through that process. I believe that was approved by City Council in the past two months or so, Mayor, Council of Arts. Mm -hmm. Why didn't the other one go through it? I don't know offhand, to tell you the truth. It's a fairly new ordinance that was passed. But the question is, do we consider this public art? And in my mind, it does seem like public art. I mean, going to go pay for about, you know, who should be making the decisions about what's allowable or what's acceptable. And that probably should not rest with this body. That should be a body or someone who's more focused on the downtown environment. Mm -hmm. And when we had the gentleman come that wanted to sell the Sun Burnt Wood, we said we wanted to get the Arts Council involved in that because it was an arts issue. But 
the direct, sort of working in the direction of the politics, I think we need to join with the larger group to, to uh, think about that. So the issue is whether it's just if it's art, then do we go to the Arts Council or do we have <coughs> um, the City Council? So that's the or the Mayor's issue. Office. Or the Mayor's Office, exactly. So one of the things we struggled with the rainbow crosswalk was how are we going to meet the MUTCD standard? And we'd have to look at this the same way too. We have to make sure that there's a certain amount of light, has a certain reflectivity, and it's so big and so wide, so long and so on. And that's where, because um, at the TPC meeting, Transportation Parking Commission, uh, Chief Sinker was very concerned about being an enforceable crosswalk too, mm -hmm. that you could write tickets off of. And this is why we looked at the MUTC for guidance and that's how we came up with the alternating pattern of color and white, color and white, so that we can meet that standard. So, is it fair to say we all agree that we need to put a little thought into some kind of a process? And and I, I agree with Mike, and I think, I think maybe we all agree that we need a broader, either a vote at the city council or a formal declaration rather than an informal one from the mayor mm -hmm. saying, yes, please make this happen. And then our focus becomes technical. Mm -hmm. Things shall be such and such, application shall be such and such. Mm -hmm. I large. also would suggest that she is honoring our veterans to have the our veterans agent, Steve Connors, and the veterans be involved in it. Sure, sure. I mean, I can imagine the veterans agent speaking with the city council or the mayor's office or whoever mm -hmm. it is that, that we're looking for participation from. And they and could come into social services and veterans and culture and recreation. Yes, sir. And before, we, when the first group came, they had raised the money, they had talked to various groups about money, but in this case, if, we, if it happens too often, we do get into that realm of if you have the money, then you can do that. And I'm not sure that we want, I'm not comfortable with the idea that because people have the money that they can do something like this. And um, so that's another aspect of this that we need to consider. So how do we um, develop the process? <coughs> Let's see, I hate, of course the city engineer could do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> develop a process if you have to. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, could it be a little subcommittee of our board that comes up with? Uh, but, but it sounds like it's a broader process, not just DPW. It sounds like you might want to suggest that you start at the mayor's office with this type of request. Or what about the joint committee? So we should take this to the, what do you think about that? We take it to the Joint Committee at their next meeting. It's August 4th. It's, it's a little bit of a wait. I mean, it's not. August 4th, I'll be traveling. My husband might be able to come in okay. and do the proposal. Mm -hmm. um, we can still put it on the agenda. Oh, yeah. I mean, so I'm thinking that we need to um, get busy coming up with a process for this. Mm -hmm. we, we, we don't, I don't think we have a good answer for you this evening because we don't have any process. It's a, it's a great question. And We're very interested in doing it if we can make it happen. So just keep me, I guess, posted as the process evolves. You know, Veterans Day is in November. Maybe we can keep our fingers crossed and have it funded by Veterans Day. Yeah, it sure seems like that's a reasonable mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. So, BJ, could you? Um, Add that to the agenda for August 4th. Mm -hmm. Great. Is that, oh, is that you? And I have your email. Thank you. So we'll try to keep you involved. That'd be great. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. Up.